Hello and welcome to the episode 308 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we'll see the Beatles performing in front of the royal family, Beatles for sales receiving the finishing touches and Yoko Ono going to the hospital once more. On the 4th of November 1960, the Beatles, in their quintet lineup with Pete Bass on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, were again on the stage of the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now with Paul McCartney on bass, were on another stage, that of the Cavern Club in Liverpool, for an evening performance. 1962 new residence in Hamburg for the Beatles, performing alone and as Little Richard's backing at the Star Club. Let's talk about the evening of the 4th of November 1963, the evening of the Royal Command performance. The now usual scenes of Beatlemania took place outside the Prince of Wales Theatre in London, with scores of policemen busy keeping hordes of fans at bay. Even the arrival of the royal family was overshadowed by that of the Fab Four. Despite the fact that the Beatles were featured seventh on a bill of 19 acts, it was clear that they were the main attraction, the most anticipated by everyone. If nothing else, the distinguished audience wanted to see what the fuss was all about. The lads won over the public with their usual wits, joviality and tricks, well described by Beatles historian Mark Lewison. Moving the microphones closer to the audience after the first song, She Loves You, gave the impression of the band getting closer to their fans. The Fabs made a point to bow to the stalls first and then to the royal box, appearing democratic. They peppered their talk between songs with jokes, like the famous John Lennon phrase. For our last number, I'd like to ask your help. Would the people in the cheaper seats clap your hands? And the rest of you, if you'll just rattle your jewelry. The whole Royal Command performance was broadcast by ITV across Britain on the 10th of November between 7.28 and 10.30 pm while BBC Radio aired the highlights of the show, omitting She Loves You, again on the 10th of November between 7.35 and 8.30 pm. On this date in 1964, the extracts from the film A Hard Day's Night EP came out in UK, featuring, as you can imagine, four songs from the first Beatles feature film. I should have known better if I fell, tell me why and and I love her. It will be another chart success for the band. In other news, between 10 am and 1 pm, the final mixing session for the Beatles for Sale album took place at the EMI Studios in London. The Beatles might have attended it, since their evening engagement at the Ritz Cinema in Luton would have been at driving distance. During the session, I'll follow the song Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, Rock and Roll Music, Words of Love, Mr. Moonlight, I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, I'm a Loser, Babies in Black, No Reply, and In Addition, I Feel Fine were all mixed in stereo. Finally, as I said, in the evening the Beatles played two houses at the Ritz Cinema in Luton for their British tour. 1965, with less than a month from the release date of the Rubber Soul LP and only half of the tracks completed, the Beatles were forced to take two actions. First of all, long sessions at Abbey Road, starting or ending well into the night, became the norm. The session on this date, for example, was actually booked to end at 3 am, ending half an hour later. Secondly, the band was forced to revise shelved song composed and or recorded previously. After Michelle recorded yesterday, 
Today was the turn of What Goes On, written during the Quarryman's days and first attempted on the 5th of March 1963, as we detailed in episode 64. What Goes On became Ringo's vocal number on Rubber Soul, and it saw Star joining Lennon and McCartney on the songwriting credits. Having completed that first song, the Fabs, aided by George Martin on harmonium, attempted another song, called 12 Bar Original, a 12 bar instrumental blues lasting 6 minutes and 42 seconds, recorded live without overdubs in two takes, only the second of which was complete. Let's close the episode with a new hospitalization for Yoko Ono in 1968. Ono, six months pregnant, was suffering from stress and the doctors were worried about the health of the baby. It will not end well. Another episode is over and you have the chance to support this podcast. If you don't have any idea about what you could do, head to www.simonmas.com support to see the many things that could help. Thank you for taking some time to do so. Stay tuned for more stories about the four you love, coming tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.